This is a short video. It's an example of a continuous function between two metric spaces. So what, here's what my example is going to consist of. So I'm going to let D be the usual metric on the real numbers. So remember D is this function on R cross R to R. And what I mean by the usual metric, the distance between two real numbers should just be the absolute value of the difference. And I'm going to let rho, this Greek letter rho, be a metric on the plane. So rho is a distance between two points in the plane. Should spit out a real number is what that says. And uh, how do I measure the distance between two points in the plane? This is what might be called the taxi cab metric. I'm going to take the difference in the x values, so this minus this, plus the difference in the y values, which is this minus this. And so just so we're all crystal clear what's going on, here's a copy of the real line. I'm saying the distance between x and y should just be absolute value of x minus y. That's d. Whereas here's the plane, and I'm saying the way to measure the distance between that yellow and that blue point it's to think about if you were driving a car, um, maybe there's not a street that goes that way like in the Euclidean metric. So I'm saying we have to add this plus this, and that would be this total here. That's what this formula is spitting out. And again, it's called the taxicab metric. So now let's say I've got a function that goes from the real numbers to the plane. And let's say that the function just takes a real number and it spits out the point x comma x squared. That kind of, if you've had calc 3, that kind of looks like a parametric representation of, you know, your favorite parabola, y equals x squared. And that's what it is. So that's exactly how you should think of it. f is this function that takes a real number x, which is in red there, and it takes it to that point on the graph x comma x squared. So what we want to show is that f is continuous. So what's the definition of continuity for metric spaces? So to remind you of that, I've written that here. So given any positive number epsilon and a particular value x and r, we need to be able to show that there exists a positive number delta such that if y is a real number where the distance between x and y is less than delta, in other words, x and y are within delta of each other, then the outputs f of x and f of y should be within epsilon of each other for using the metric that's in the range or in the codomain, whatever you want to say. So I tried to draw you a picture here. How do you think about this definition? So what I'm saying is if I was to be given an x and an r, so I put the x there and this epsilon here, sorry, I said that wrong. If I was given an epsilon and an r. If I was to draw that diamond, because that's what a typical open, open ball looks like in the taxi cab metric. So if I put that diamond of any radius epsilon around that, I should be able to look back here in the domain and find a corresponding window around x using d, right, using the metric back here, so that every single point inside of here, when you plug it into f, should land inside of this window over here in the, uh, in the range. So there needs to be able we need to be able to find a delta that, again, can depend on epsilon and it can depend on x, but nothing else. So how do we actually go about doing it? Again, that's the idea to show its continuity. It should seem fairly similar to what you might have done in calculus or a real analysis class. So typically what we'll do is we'll do some scratch work to find delta, where we'll typically start with this statement here. I want the distance between the outputs over here to be less than epsilon. So let's actually play with what this formula is and remember what rho actually does in this example. So we'll start with rho, f of x comma f of y. And remember what these two points are. Remember what f does. f takes the point x and it takes it to the ordered pair x comma x squared. Similarly, f of y should be y comma y squared. Now if I take the distance between these two ordered pairs, remember I take the difference in the first coordinates plus the difference in the second coordinates. So again, that's the taxi cab metric. And then now, this might seem familiar again if you've had real analysis. What we're going for is, I see that this is d of x, y right here. I would love to um, be able to say factor d of x, y out of this because um, then uh, I'll just save that for a second. So I'd love to be able to factor d of x, y out of that. And I sure can because I can factor this. And so I see that there's my x minus y, in other words, d of x, y. And uh, when I do factor that out, I get this here. So remember, I want to be able to find a delta so that when this is less than delta, then this whole thing is less than epsilon. And um, in this case, though, I'm a little nervous because I've got this extra, extra factor here, and that's why I've colored it pink. So I want to know, well, how bad is this if this is less than some number delta? So let's pick a concrete number delta. Let's say that the distance between x and y is uh, less than 1. Let's see what, the, what does that tell me about this expression. 
Uh, what does that tell me about y, rather? So then this is equivalent to saying that, well, x minus y should be a real number between negative 1 and 1. I'm going to try to get y by itself. So if I subtract x everywhere, I get this. And if I multiply through by the negative, the inequalities flip around, and I should get this. So what can we say about how bad can y be? The absolute value y has to be smaller than or equal to just the larger of these two. All right, so then I'm going to let L denote that maximum value. So L is going to be whichever of these two is larger in absolute value. And absolute value Y has to be between them. So in other words, I'm trying to say absolute value Y definitely has to be between absolute value of each of these. Okay, so then why is that useful? Well, because I wanted to get a handle on how bad is that pink expression, absolute value X plus Y. Well, I know from, I'm going to do this little trick where I'm going to add zero, right? I really added and subtracted another y inside. But that allows me to use the triangle inequality, which I know holds for the usual metric, right? Which again, whenever you see that absolute value stuff there, it's really d the, uh, that I defined earlier in the, in the example. Anyway, I use the triangle inequality to split this up into these two pieces. And this is where I see that this L comes in. So what can I say? I can say that, well, absolute value of x plus y is equal to, or less than or equal to, sorry, 1 plus 2L. And we're happy because this L doesn't depend on y anymore. L, if you think about it, only depends on what is that x that we're trying to show those functions continuous at. So we're trying to more or less get rid of y. In other words, our argument shouldn't depend on y at all. It should only depend on x, and it should work for every y that's in a particularly small enough window. So what do we have then? So when x minus y is within, uh, sorry, when x and y are within one of each other, then what can we say about the outputs? Well, if I was to just plug this back in, I'm trying to substitute now, sorry, keep moving it around. I'm going to substitute this statement in right here. All right, we just showed that that is less than, maybe I should say, or equal to um, 1 plus 2L. And then if I add those together, well, that's 2 plus 2L. And so what would be cool if this gets to be, if I got to find something that this is less than, why not let delta be the minimum of 1 and epsilon over 2 plus 2L? And if I see it's the latter here, if you think about plugging that in right there, then I see that uh, this stuff would cancel. Maybe I can say that here. Uh, this would cancel with this, and you just get less than epsilon. I'll show you that in a minute. But again, I need it to be the minimum of these two, so that uh, I have this one here in order to ensure that I could actually use an argument like I did in the pink there. So what's the actual proof look like? Right? Remember, for those, we're like working backwards. So what's the actual proof look like? So the first thing we'll do, let epsilon be a positive number, and let's fix a real number x that's uh, on the real line with the usual metric. So let's choose delta to be the minimum of 1 and epsilon over 2 plus 2L. And then if we were to pick any other point y that is, again, within delta of x, where again, delta is the smaller of these two, what do we see? Well, the uh, distance between the outputs, f of x and f of y, I'm not doing anything special, so I'm just kind of rewriting the work I did up there in green in my scratch work. I know that this distance should be exactly equal to this. I'm going to factor this again, and then I'm going to factor out the absolute value of x minus y. And uh, what else? Then I recall from above, I know that that is um, less than uh, 1 plus 2L. So then in all, this would be less than delta. And then this stuff, if this is 1 plus 2L, then I'd have 2 plus 2L here. And so uh, what is delta, though? Remember, delta is whatever the smaller of these. So then that would be smaller than or equal to, I could put epsilon over 2 plus 2L here. And I probably should put just a less than or equal to here. And so in that case, what happens? I see that these cancel, and I just get epsilon at the end of the day. And so that proves that this function f is continuous for these two, between these two metric spaces.